<laughs> you know. <laughs> 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 yeah. J <J-Mo. laughs> Will. Here's the thing. Oh, gee. Uprise. You like how I said that? That's pretty good. That's good, huh? That was really That's good. what it does to me when I hear the music. Yeah. I, I, I feel energetic mm. and flowetic. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. I, I, yeah. I'm really not sure. interesting. Yeah. I like that, Jason. You like energetic and yeah. flowetic. Yeah, I like that because I had, I had a previous thought about something to do with Uprise. But we'll, we'll 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 discuss that off because I don't want nobody to steal the okay. idea. Okay. Yeah. Don't do it because you know it's happened before. Yeah, yeah, it definitely happened before. It's happened so, before. Yeah, I don't want nobody to steal the idea. Okay. But um, before we get into football, okay, Jason and OC podcast. Yeah. By the way, yeah, our listeners, we're, lazy we're, boy, we're, we're, all that lazy boy. Yeah, hit it one time. Lazy boy. That's it, J-Bell. Yeah. You got a good voice, you know. It's a pretend good voice. Yeah, it's pretty good. My daughter tells me constantly to stop singing. Interesting fact. Did you know that anybody can be taught how to sing? Did really? you know that? <laughs> yeah. I did, I did not. I you didn't can know. just learn how to handle all of the how things. To sing. Right. Everybody can sing, which is interesting. I never knew that. Everybody. Ha- really? You, you anybody, can't be taught to be a super great superior singer. I don't know if anybody could be taught to be a super great superior singer, yeah. but anybody can be taught theoretically how to sing. I guess it's the same way you can teach somebody how to sprint. Doesn't yeah. mean how fast they're going to be. Uh, I don't think it's the same way. <laughs> <laughs> I can teach you how to sprint. You yeah. still might not be fast, but you got proper technique. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. That's okay, what I'll I meant. That. Sorry, that. I didn't yeah. give you. I give you that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I that. just threw it out there, yeah. and then yeah. okay, I give you okay. that. My bad, bro. But it, there's something. <laughs> so uh, some, there's, there's something that I wanted to discuss with you. J-Bell, Please talk to me my as boy. I sip my coffee. My guy, mm-hmm. JBZ. Mm-hmm. And it's important that. And it, we I, we have to throw out disclaimers yes. first because okay. nobody has the answer, and I'm not asking you yes. in this particular instance for an answer. Right. I just want you to tell me if my logic makes any sense at all. If I can connect, if I can map this out. If you can map this out. Okay. Right. I like this, and this is why I didn't want to discuss with you before. <laughs> no. I I like I like Jay. I like unprepared Jason. Yes. Me, yes, and I like unprepared. Jason. Disclaimer is I you like said something. Jason. That, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't like unprepared. You don't like. You hate <laughs> unprepared, Jason. I, you don't like unprepared, Jason. But I like unprepared. You Jason. know what? Mm-hmm. You taught me something, and I want you to go into your thing. Yep. We were doing something, uh, maybe filming something. I forget the exact location, but you looked at me and you said, "When are you going to start trusting yourself?" Yeah. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> you were like, you need to trust yourself. Yeah. And it was something we had just done, and I was able to look at that, and when you said you that statement, so well. I had it. Yeah. I was like, oh, I get it. Like yeah. Because it was right there in that moment. Anyways, yep. thank you for that. Yep. Continue. Okay. So our good friend mm-hmm. and manager, mm-hmm. Teal, yes. sends me a article this morning. Mm. And Till always sends me articles on the people who she knows I like. Yeah. Right? <laughs> She's not going to waste your time. Yeah. But here's the thing. She will. She disagrees with these people, right? Mm-hmm. So whenever they do something uh, stupid or they say something stupid, she sends me the article. Like, here you go. <laughs> here you go. This is, yeah, right? We're not even going to argue, but right. here you go. Yeah, yeah. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> Till slick. She's really slick. So she knows how I feel about Candace Owens, and she knows how I feel about Kanye West, right? I don't even know how you really feel. Oh, I I feel like they say a lot of things that make a lot of sense, and they also say some very stupid things, in my estimation, right? Okay. But I don't just blanket say these are stupid people because of the stupid things that they may say. You right? don't talk about people like that, period. Exactly, right? So there's certain things that they say that make sense. And I'm like, okay, this actually makes quite a bit of sense, mm-hmm. right? And then there's certain things that they say. I'm like, eh, I don't know about this one, right? Mm-hmm. So follow me here, Jay. It's going to take me a couple of minutes, I right? I need this, though. Yeah, just follow me here. I'm with you. So Kanye has been saying some things that have been deemed anti-Semitic, right? He's been saying some things about Jewish people, mm-hmm. right? And um, I'm not going to repeat the things that he says, right? Yeah. I'm not going to do that. But he's been saying some things that people are saying are anti-Semitic. And so I get the article and I hear some of the things that I read some of the things and I'm like, 
bro, like you're tripping, right? Mm-hmm. You can't, you can't talk. These things you're saying are, I'm not even clearly not factual, right? And they just, they don't make any sense, right? To me, mm-hmm. they may make sense to him. Mm-hmm. They don't make any sense to me. Mm-hmm. But then he said something that caught me off guard. Okay. Right? He said something that made me say, hmm. He said, I'm black, right? But black people are the original Jews. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. And I'm Jewish. Therefore, I can't be anti-Semitic. Right? Mm -hmm. This is what he said. And I said, what are you talking about? Like, you can't just identify as Jewish. And then as soon as I said that, Jason, I caught myself. I caught myself Mm -hmm. as soon as I said it. And this is where the problems for me started this morning. I've been in big trouble with myself (laughs) this morning. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to tell you why. (laughs) Because as I'm sitting there saying, you can't just say that. You can't say, you can't identify. I was like, well, actually, you can. Actually, in where we are now, (laughs) you can. And so if now, right, (laughs) if now you can say, no, I'm, I am Jewish. Who are we to say you're not? There's a, there's a lot of black Jewish people. Tons. Right? So. It's a religion. So now, if in fact, as a man, right? Or somebody who was born, say male, right? You can identify (coughs) or say you're female, right? I know that in absolute terms, right, 99.9% of us, we share the exact same DNA, Mm 99.9%, right? So really all you're talking about is like 0.1%. So a black person under these can say he's white and a white person can say they're black. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. We we can all is everything is fluid now. Everything is because by we're by all this, human. We're all human. We people have put an agenda on colors for Good. all re, all kind of reasons throughout history. Right. We right? we know we know what that is. It's done so the now, so now. We know, I know black people, right? We can say like the N word to each other and it's not really like, for the most part, it's not really an insult, right? And women say the B word to each other and it's not really an insult. Can I say something? And I want you to finish. This is what I was gonna say, but I don't wanna go off in this direction. Mm. I do think that is an insult and I do think it should be corrected. And to your other point, because you identify with something, does it give you the ability to openly criticize or say certain things that should not be said in public sphere? Very good. I agree with you. Okay. Because that, that's where I'm like. Yeah, no, yeah. I, 100%. Because I have to check myself on words I've used and Correct. S- because of this. Correct. Okay. I 100% agree with okay. you. Okay. Right? Yeah. But it's hypocritical for the most part. For us to say that he can't identify. Oh yeah, yeah. Now that, right? I, I uh, is my logic is my logic flawed? No. on that. Oh, see, the thing about it that's always great about how you approach things and how we discuss things, and even when we bring in other people, is uh, the framework in the way we address these topics is trying to understand both sides mm-hmm. and understanding that the positives one place and another place like there's this there's this 
there's this point in the circle where they all merge, right? Yeah. And, and, and you can't have one without the other and, and understanding what that is. And, you know, you can't have A without B You're kind right. of things, right? And <laughs> I think a lot of times people want something and they don't understand the implications of that thing, <laughs> of that right? Thing. It's, I want to make this decision, <laughs> but that decision also reflects and affects these things. And I think that second level thinking is what you always do now. And what you're saying, I immediately I'm looking at you not talking, but I'm like looking at you like, yeah, shaking my head because absolutely. If people are fighting for identity rights and whatever yeah. that is, you cannot say what identity rights that a person can fight for yeah. or want. Yeah. Like you just can't, can't do OC. it. You can't do it. And that. That's the thing about all this simple thing. And I'm not trying to flip it on football, but we talk about stuff that's happening in the game that we don't necessarily like or or rules change. Yeah. We, what do we always talk about? Why this is happening and what it connects to. I might not agree with what is going on today. Right now, we were just talking about roughing the past of the yep. other day. And we know how hard it is on players, but we know why this is happening. Yep. We know why this is connecting. We know what this comes from. So, yes, we might be mad at that one single play and everybody's tweet and everybody's whatever, but we're trying to do something. Yeah. And it's the same of what you're talking about. Before we lash out at people because of decisions. Now, I don't agree. Kanye is. I don't respect. Mm. Him, first of all, mm -hmm. but I'm with you on this conversation. Yeah. What he's doing and the way I look at what his way of going at it is he he's a master manipulator yeah. and there it we had a president that was a master manipulator mm -hmm. so it works and he understands that yeah. and he uses it to his advantage mm -hmm. and guess what it works yeah because it changes the news cycle immediately i remember uh my brother telling me one time about the i was upset about um the Ball brothers, the basketball, and their mm. dad a long time ago. I was like, why does, man, he's always doing this, he's always doing that. And they, and he looked at me and he's like, they keep putting a microphone in his face. Mm -hmm. It's not his fault. They want this. Yeah. And I was like, I just stopped. You know, because I wanted to blame him and what he was doing. Now, a lot of stuff was a whole nother conversation, but they keep putting a mic in front of his face yeah. because we want to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> It's crazy, you know. It's crazy, and it, it's you know, crazy. It's yeah. crazy, and, and we want to talk about it. But back to your other point, so yeah. I don't get far off of it. Yeah, I agree with you. You have the right. If you're gonna have, if you're gonna, if you're gonna fight for identity rights, you gotta let everybody you gotta have let it. Everybody. You gotta let everybody have it. And I'm, I'm cool with that. Yeah. You're cool with that. Yeah. Some people aren't. They're not. Oh, see, <laughs> they people. Not. Hey, man, it's so funny. I tell everybody and. It's, you know, you look at Twitter, you you know, sometimes you look at people's comments and whatever. People, uh, hey man, when people are uncomfortable, they lash out. Yeah. But they never ask themselves, what, why do I feel like this? Like, w this is just how I feel. And I got to right the wrongs of the world because of how I feel? Mm -hmm. Like, that's, you can't live like that. Yeah. And I, I think, I think that's a part of the problem. Pe things that make people uncomfortable, they they don't want any part of that, but they want you to make them comfortable. They want you to move mountains to make their life easy. Easy, and it just doesn't happen like that. I tell you what, everybody who's in here right now, now you see why I didn't want to prepare him. <laughs> <laughs> now you see. <laughs> That's the J Bell I love right there. <laughs> Unfiltered, logical, reason. We don't have the answer. But you're right. That was beautiful, though. People just, hey, man, why don't we just. It, have you ever. I know you're like this. And then maybe I picked it up from you over these years. But I swear I check myself throughout the day. Mm. Why am I? Like I always start with that, or or I or Jason. I don't even use my first name. I've mm -hmm. learned I learned this with some kind of meditation thing. Like talk about yourself in second, like in first person. Like you know, I'm not in first person, right? You talk about yourself like in second, second person. person yeah. yeah, yeah. See, I don't got that figured out, mm -hmm. right? Because then you 
remove it from being you. Jason, why is this bothering you? Mm-hmm. And then you can logically figure it out. Be like, I have the problem. Yes, problem. You have the problem. Yeah. This ain't a problem. Yeah. You just made it up. People don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> I have to do it all day, and yeah. I'm aware of it. Like, it's not everyone else making you feel a certain way. You are making you. yourself feel like this. Yeah. That's goes to that goes to that thing. Yeah. That, that's interesting. Yeah. But I, I still don't know. I still, I think, a, I don't know. Rega- regardless of his motivation, right? Regardless of his motivation, yeah, right, yeah, which could be nefarious, mm-hmm. and in most cases, probably is, yeah, right. We still can't deny <laughs> that he right? can do that. Can't deny he can do that. Do that. But and I, we have to, we have to. And, it, and it's 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 no. It's, I, you can't deny slimy. he can't identify with it, but you right. can de- you can say you can't have these these comments though. That means you cannot do that. Yeah, we That's can say he can't have. We can say he can't make those comments, yeah. right? I believe that. But as somebody who identifies the same way, like I, like I just said, even though we disagree with yeah. me calling you that, mm. The, mm, you calling yeah. me that, yeah. There's still like society still generally. You get a pass. You get a pass. Yeah. But right? there's a, yeah. This is the same thing that if you look at some conservative movements in the US, not the, you know, real deep red movements mm. and identity politics, a lot of it is they want to still do things and interact in a way that they were able to do years ago. Mm-hmm. And that's their fight. Why can't we be like this? Yes. As the world's changed and adjusted, they want to hold on to that. We say that's, you know, a lot of people have a problem with that, but that's that's what they identify with. Okay. So this isn't a question to you. Mm-hmm. This is just a question in general. Okay. Because I've seen a lot of people be upset mm-hmm. about, um, they call it cultural appropriation yep. and all these type of things. Mm-hmm. If a white person wanted to identify as black, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Which has happened. Which has happened. Mm-hmm. In these circumstances that we're living under now, mm-hmm. in this world that we're living in now, that we've moved towards, mm-hmm. we can't really be upset about that anymore. Why would we? There's a lot of people who are upset yeah, about it. It's it's you can't you can't say we want unity. We want everybody to come together. Yeah. Um, in America and, and in other countries, you look at the hip hop culture. Yeah. It's everybody's culture now. Like it's everybody's. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like who? who what does music belong to? What does fashion belong to? It doesn't belong it doesn't to one belong person. To anybody. <laughs> and when I hear people do that, I'm like, that is putting us back even farther. Correct. Like we fought to be <laughs> mainstream. This is where opportunity lie. Now you want to act like it it can't it be? It can't be. Yeah. Does that make any business sense? No. You know, and that and you see people do that and you're like, you just missed the boat. Yeah. But it will still continue. You can't stop a strong river. But there's a lot of people going to get washed to the shores, my brother, yeah. cuz it's going to pass you by. It's going to you know, so it's it's interesting. I will say this, and I'm going to end it like, like this, and then we can go to football. I think a lot of people might wonder why you look at certain people like Kanye or Candace Owens. They're like, well, what? Oh, see, why? Why? Mm. And I just need to put something out there. It's because you always will find something somebody says, one thing. Yeah. And you'd be like, I understand that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. can say 20 other things that you're like, this is the worst thing you ever, but one thing, and you'd be like, I get that. And that, I think that's what makes you a great interviewer and a great listener because you can find common ground yeah. and you're looking for that. Yeah. I, so I, I want to put that out there so people don't think this is how you think because it's no, not. No. It's, it's you're looking for things where you could be like, what are they trying to say? Yeah. I do, Cause I don't agree with this. I don't agree with this. What, what What's yeah. happening here? Yeah. And you are always about people um, dismantling power. <laughs> and that's that Jason is where the truth really is. <laughs> that's where the truth really is. Um, you know, you know, you know, you know, you <laughs> know, <laughs> <laughs> 
that's yeah. J Will. <laughs> Here's the thing. Oh, geez, we need help. I, I will take from something they said. Uh huh. Something completely different than what they even meant. I, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> it's it's like you give people credit for being r- right there. <laughs> You like you didn't cross the line, but I saw where you were going. You know what I and mean? I appreciate that. I appreciate that. <laughs> that is. And we, hey, that's a good way to be. We talked about this. We've talked about this. It's a good way to times. be. I saw um I, I saw a guy, uh, I think he was a footballer. Um, and somebody said something. Must have been like a 15, 16 year old kid. Yeah. Said post sent him a message. Mm-hmm. You know, calling them something, you know, you know, deemed to be insulting. Okay. The guy posted it on uh, social media. Social media, yep. you know, called the guy out, you know. Mm-hmm. And everybody's like, yeah, good for calling out the racism. And, you know, that racist. <laughs> In my head, as I looked at as I looked at this situation, right? I thought about the footballer mm-hmm. who most people in the world want to be like, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And then I thought about the kid who probably posted that, who probably has a uh, crisps residue on his fingers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> was, All on his chest. On his ugh. chest, just, right? And lick, ugh. <laughs> just, just a nobody, right? Mm-hmm. And the thought to me that somebody like that could insult somebody like that, right? It makes no sense to you. It it makes zero sense to I me. Know. I know. Zero. What you mean. I don't understand it. I know. And to me, the thought that that is an actual insult is I, I consider that white supremacy. Right. Yes, you do. I consider it that. Yeah. yeah. Because why does yes, and you've always said that. So when all these, oh yeah, man, in my head I was like, no, no, that guy's an idiot. Yeah, <laughs> that's what he is. He can't say anything he can't to actually say impact anything you. to impact you. There's nothing about this person that empowers them that much. Their color, really, really, <laughs> really. That's what it is. And so it's 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 things like that, J Bell. Yeah, that's. I'm fundamentally, like when I see things that people say that mm. a lot of people don't agree with, but I can grab onto the little aspect of empowerment. Yeah, you do it. I do it. I know, it's smart. You know? Very we, smart. We, 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 have, we have to stop with this. We have to stop with it, man. Yeah. Because there's people who are really racist. Yeah. There are people who are actually in control, who can really affect your life. They're not on Twitter. <laughs> Making comments. Quiet. Yeah. And they're just sneaking through. And we're all enraged. Oh, this little kid. And this. Oh, come on, man. Hey, man. I love this because I, I always think, you know, when we talk about football, we try to relate things. We... It's funny, right? You know, you know you're trying to get to the goal line. Mm. Everybody knows they're trying to score. Mm. But they just can't run right at you. Yeah. They can't. I'm throwing the ball over here. Look at me. Ah! <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Window dressing. Yep. You know, we we talk about teams and how they use groupings and personnel and they're messing with our eyes, right? Trying to make me look this way and then get me this way, attack this space that's opening. That's all you see. Yep. We are a lot of people are focused. On all the window dressing, all the window dressing. and the ball's going right over their head. Perfectly said. Right <laughs> over their head. And the problem is, in a game, you can evaluate that play by play, series by series, week by week. And if you're not fixing it, go on to the next. Yep. No time for you. But in the world, it could take six months, year, two three before you look and be like, oh, I just oh. wasted a lot of time <laughs> worried about this and worried about that instead of really just looking at what was they were, how they were really trying to attack me yeah. and who and what and why. Yeah, that, that's why we love, that's why people love sports because it, it emulates. Emula- yeah, yeah, and it emulates real life. There's yeah. stuff going on out there. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm, I, I, yeah. So, so with you on that. 
We'll see how it plays out. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I'm sorry. Oh uh, yeah, football. Yeah. No, no, no. It's yeah. good. It's it's, yeah. it's it's it's. I like this because when we look at the game, mm. we look at what happens this week. This is how we look at the game. Yeah. We look at the game from okay, this happened, that happened, but then we dig deep. We look on both sides. We look on why is this happening? Mm. What's going on? What's occurring? And I think that's. That is what makes it unique to us and 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 the game. Why every year is a new year, new characters, stuff like that. And I, I just want to start off with something, man. Mm. You always talk about this. You always talk about Bill Belichick. Yeah. You always talk about the greatness of Bill Belichick. You always talk about not going against Bill Belichick. Mm-hmm. Now. When you see what the Patriots are and what they're doing mm-hmm. and the Bill Belichick effect, yeah. to your point about focusing on the real power, yeah. not the noise, not all these different agendas, not listening to anything except what we're doing in here and what matters trying to accomplish this goal. Do you see that in the way they're evolving? I mean... Who thought they were going to score 38 points this week? Bailey Zappi? This defense, OC, yeah. is they're playing well. Phenomenal. They, I mean, every year we know, give them a couple of games. Yeah. Mm. This is Belichick's imprint. They look like they know exactly what's happening, yep. where to go, playing physical, understanding what they need to do to win. Mm. I'm just throwing it at you. Yep. You know... I think lost in um, the Tom Brady era, right, with New England, I don't think people truly, well, football people know, Mm. but most people on the outside don't understand that Belichick is a defensive coach, (laughs) right? They forget. (laughs) They forget. They forget. This dude really almost started the nickel defense when he was in New York when they won the Super Bowl. He, he, he's a he's a defensive coach. This is what he mm-hmm. has, you know, embodied. And so, you know, Tom Brady came along, and then offensive coordinators, and all you know, they've kind of, you know, lifted the Patriots up offensively. But in his core, that's really what he is. He rolls. So this isn't a this shouldn't be a surprise, no. or to anybody who understands Bill Belichick and the things that he's been able to do, right? So defensively, they're o- they're always a solid defense. Always, always, always. Right? Eventually, they always figure it out. I just saw something on um the corner, J.C. Jackson. Uh-huh. Oh, who, uh huh. Oh, went to uh, now he's at the Chargers. He's at the Chargers. Yep. You know what I mean? And he's like, they're, he's, they're talking about if he's worth it. <laughs> he literally gives up a hundred and forty something. Passer rating. How do you remember this stuff? Yeah, like 145 <laughs> passer rating, right? Yep. Like, I don't know how you remember He's been – but in, in New England, he was a baller. Yeah. A lot of people who are really good in New England, they leave New England and they're really not good. Because Belichick's puts you in the right in position. In the right position. your skill set. Period. Mm-hmm. So now we have um, Bailey Zappi. I'm actually um, supposed to be doing like a, a touchscreen on them. On our show on Friday, Ooh, so, get ready. Yeah, OC's so, back on the screen. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to like really okay. think through, you know, what I'm going to say and how I'm going to do it. Uh-huh. But I've been studying uh-huh. this guy, uh-huh. the quarterback. Yep. And I realized that the things that he's doing, right, are things that you don't normally see rookie quarterbacks do. Mm. And I'm trying to figure out how how this happened. Right. I'm trying to figure out how this happened Mm -hmm. because you see him, you know, look to his left, Mm -hmm. read through his progression, Mm -hmm. look to his right. He's he's, you could see him processing the nugget right there. OC. Right. The nugget. Yeah. You could could see him doing it. And I'm like, okay. Mac Jones was there. Mac Jones is a really smart guy. Yes. But in this small sample size, he, he, he wasn't doing it the way. This guy is yeah, doing it, yeah, right? Yeah. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, how how has he been able to do this so quickly? Yep. Yep. And then <laughs> in this offense or whatever it is that they run in New England, we, we know he, he plays a high value on intelligence. Yes. So is just being a smart quarterback more valuable than having incredible amount of talent in this particular system? 
man, it's funny when you start watching tape, bro, yeah. and the stuff you pick up, mm. it's funny because you're you're spot on. But it's always when you go and you start digging, right? Yeah. All right, absolutely. So he's he's 24 out of 34, mm. right? You're right. High efficiency, completing passes. What I was I was reading this and what I was watching was the same. I was seeing somebody process quickly. Yep. Arm strength is, uh, you know, yeah. there's a reason he's not the top dude. Arm right. strength is not great, mm. but his process and how he can break it down is phenomenal. So I say this, and I throw this at you. If you're building a team mm. and you're looking for a number three quarterback, possibly can be your number two in the future years, you need a guy who doesn't need what? Reps. Reps. Mm-hmm. You need a guy who's com- not going to get a lot of. He's not going to get reps. Yeah. He's got to be super intelligent. He's got to be able to process. He's got to be able to get rid of the ball quick, mm-hmm. right? Because mm-hmm. if you don't have a, a strong arm, you have to be able to figure it out fast. Yeah. This is what he did in college. What does Belichick do? He looks at that tape. He's like, "Oh, that's what you do. Mm-hmm. This is what you're going to do for mm-hmm. us." But it fits. I need a guy get me through a game or two. Hopefully, if it's three, you know, I need my guy back. Because if it's more than that, it really impacts your team. Mm-hmm. But to your point, you saw it on tape. As a defensive lineman, you got to know quarterbacks. Yep. You have to study what they do. Mm-hmm. This guy gets up there. He's efficient. He's effective. That's what you have to have out of your backups. Mm-hmm. When people look at teams now, a backup needs to get you through game, game, mm-hmm. or a couple of games. Mm-hmm. I need OC back. I'm going to have to put this dude in, get me through a game or two before they realize, oh, they're not the same without us. Yeah. You know, that's the kind of player I was. Whenever yeah. I had to start, get us, I could get you through a game, I could get you through a couple. Mm-hmm. But you get a couple of weeks of tape on me, mm-hmm. you're going to start trying me and stuff. He'd be like, I don't think he can do this. Yeah. That's the difference between starters and backups. Mm. They okay. are finding yep. out your weaknesses mm-hmm. week after week after week, and you have to adjust, adjust, adjust. That makes you a great starter. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. I hear you. I hear you, right? Yep. I'll say this, though, in the case of New England. Tell me more. I'll say this in the case of New England. From what I've seen, and granted, it's a, it's a small sample size. That's all we got. Right? <laughs> but from what I'm seeing, I can't say uh-huh. emphatically, right, uh-huh. that Mac Jones is in a completely different stratosphere than Bailey Zappi. Okay. I, I, can't, I can't say it. Okay. Right? Okay. For instance, okay, we see the situation. He hasn't proven it. We see the situation in Dallas, yep. right? Uh, Cooper Rush, he was winning games. Came back down to earth. Right, right. <laughs> But 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 on top of that, right? He, he's winning games, uh-huh. right? But the way they're winning, they've completely changed the offense. Yeah, yeah. and you can see you're like, well, you know, with Dak, Dak back is in there, clearly, yeah. <laughs> he's clearly a more talented. Yeah, he's a he's a much better quarterback than this guy. Yes, you, you could see it. Yes, right. Mm-hmm. I don't think, I don't think I can say that about Mac Jones. Not enough time. Yeah, not enough time out there on the field. Still young? Is that? I, I see but where you're in, going. In terms of like talents, yeah, I, I, I can't say it. Yeah, he's not known to be big arm guy. It is about how he processes the game, gets you in and out of the right plays, Same doesn't things. make turnovers. Yeah, I, you're making a strong <laughs> argument. I cannot, yeah. I cannot say that is a crazy thought. Yeah, it's the same because it's not, it's not, it's not. Um. Oh, uh, Patrick Mahomes got knocked out, and here's Bailey Zappi. You know he's just keeping the seat warm. Like you, and you know, the drop off is just yeah, like we yeah. don't. E- we're not even. Who are we? Even if Bailey Zappi played the way he's playing now, mm. you would still say Patrick Mahomes. Oh yeah, yeah. When he comes back, Bailey Zappi is going to sit down. Yeah, of course. You would still say that. Yeah, yeah. I can't. I can't say that. Is that the mm. Belichick effect of how the team is being ran and? And just, I mean, he won the first Super Bowl with Tom Brady running the ball, playing good defense. See my don't hands? lose the game. You see my hands? Yeah. Make I a couple I throws. Don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm glad. I just can't say. I, I, I'm glad you said that and segued us I, I, quickly about the, uh, the Eagles and the Cowboys. Mm. Because that noise about Dak was like, what are these people talking about? I mean, yeah. people need one-liners, hot takes. And I just go back to this. 
Dog, they cut Cooper Rush and brought him back so they didn't have to guarantee his contract. Mm. You know that that that, that game, game, they, game play. That they play. Bro, if you think he's that dude, you don't cut him. Mm. You don't cut players. You think are like oh, especially. oh somebody might pick him up yeah. right they could they to save money now yeah. it didn't help him I mean now he ain't going nowhere he's mm. he's he's made himself some money yep. as a high level backup yep. on that game though and then I want your opinion on New York the New York teams mm-hmm. but in that game what I saw is something that I want to talk about on the show too you know how. This goes to Bill Belichick. Mm. No noise, no no bulletin board material. Don't give him nothing. I heard Micah Parsons on our friends, a friend we both know, podcast, The Pivot. Mm-hmm. And he's talking to Ryan Clark and he's talking about how he just, man, once I learn the game, I'm going to be great. Once I learn, I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm going to be great. Right? Yeah. And guess what? The Philadelphia Eagles said, mm. oh, you don't know what you're doing? Mm. We're going to run right at you. Yeah, We're going to make you make high-level football decisions then. Mm. He told on himself, Oz. Mm-hmm. He, when a, when a player that is a superior athlete, you don't want to run away from him and have him chase you down. Mm-hmm. You want to run at Directly him at and him. give him conflict. Mm-hmm. You want him, this, we're going to run at you and it's going to look like this. Then we're going to do it and look like this. Then mm-hmm. we're going to do it and look like this. Mm-hmm. You know that because yep. you've been on that edge your whole life. Yep, 100%. And that's what they did. And if, when I watched that game, I said, oh my goodness, he told on himself. Yep, yeah. And then w- when he went to off the ball, they threw the ball. <laughs> right <laughs> where it. he's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. This is the brilliance yeah. of a game, of a of a plan like the Eagles have. And I'll simplify it. When you can run the ball and be dominant with your offensive line and you got a running quarterback and and you make everything kind of look the same, right? We run this and Mm. we have a play, a pass play that looks like this, Mm -hmm. but, you know, now we're going to creep somebody in right where you would be standing, but you're going to have to come up and defend the run Mm -hmm. because I don't care what happens. You know in the run game, you have to respect it. Got to honor it. Because if they get through those lanes, I'm back there at safety you know what I'm saying? Praying to every guy. Mm, nobody, nobody, that's the worst. To get the ball run down your throat. That's oh, it's the, the worst. worst. And they can't have that. Yeah. And they try to make those people that have to defend the run and pass mm. have give them different Conflict. looks and keys, mm-hmm. right? Great players can decipher what those are. Micah Parsons got mm. exposed. Yeah. Great player. Yeah. But I feel like to the Belichick effect, to what you were saying, oh, yeah. don't tell him nothing. Yeah. Don't tell him. Yeah. What do you think about New York? Yeah. First of all, there was another matchup I was watching Tell me. in that Philly game because I wanted to see. Tell me. I wanted to see Michael Parsons mm-hmm. rushing Lane Johnson. Lane Johnson's the man. <laughs> you see when he went out how they changed as an offense. Lane Johnson is the man. Yo. <laughs> He's the man, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's certain good. times, uh, th- there's just certain, certain times that, you know, there are these offensive tackles, right? That sometimes they're, they're just superior. Ooh, you're right. Yeah. Yep. They are. And you run into them every once in a while. You do. You run into them every once in a while. <laughs> as a, as a, spoken by a man who knows. Oh, yeah, yeah. There, there's certain times you run into an offensive tackle. Yep. And you're like, this guy is... Uh, this guy's better than me. <laughs> he, he's beastie. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I remember. I remember. You remember um, uh, the Pancake Man, uh, Orlando Pace? Oh yes. Oh my gosh, he was so big. So I played against him with the Rams. He was playing. He was playing with the Rams, right? And I was right in. Now, J Bell, I had a key mm-hmm. on getting off the ball. Yep. And I went to the referee and I told him, like, "Hey, listen." I'm not off sides. Yeah. I'm seeing something. It's their fault. Mm-hmm. You understand what I mean? I'm seeing something. And so I was getting off the ball literally split second, maybe a half second before the ball was snapped. And the ref knew which you had told him. I already told him, right? Yeah. So I was out of there. <laughs> if you look at it on tape, you're like, this guy's clearly off sides. Yeah. <laughs> right? You had the key. But I had the key. And Jason, he was back there with me. <laughs> Thought you were gonna say something else, Jason. J Bell. 
I couldn't understand How what was going he, on. Why is he here? I couldn't understand it. I'm almost off sides. Jason, it's not possible. It's not possible for him to have been there. You understand what I mean? Mm-hmm. Any other offensive tackle would have given up nine sacks that day. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yes. Any other one. Oh. So I got back and I went back to my house that day. Oh. And all I could do was think to myself, because oh, even when I watched tape, uh-huh. I still couldn't understand what he was doing, how he was he was getting back there. Wow. And so every once in a while, like I said, you run into some of these guys who are superior. Beastie. And Lane Johnson is a superior offensive yeah. tackle. They need him back. And we all saw that. We did. We saw that. Some about the Eagles, too, that's fascinating is they're they, – Draft those guys and develop them. Yeah. Jordan Mailata, mm, right? Mm-hmm. All of them. And it's their offensive line coach. Yep. Man. That is an important coach. It's probably the most important coach on your team. That coach is a position. Yep. And the development, I, I mean, it, it, it's amazing. I agree. Uh, New York got some. You want to talk about New York? Real they got, quick, they got, yeah, they got yeah. Some, um, give, give me something, yeah. Yeah, they got a good offensive line coach. Yeah, they do. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew Thomas, they say, is the playing his He's best balling. offensive tackle in football right He's, now. Evan Neal's coming along. Look at that. Offensive line, man. O-line. This is what you're seeing in the leagues. The good teams got good O-lines, yep. obviously. It is. If you got a bad O-line, it, it's Forget just it. not happening for you right Forget now. Not it. at this time of the year. Forget it. Did you think the Jets were going to beat the Green Bay Packers? Nobody thought the Jets were going to beat the Green Bay Packers, right? No, I mean, in Green Bay, you know, I think. But I think when you look at the way the Jets are playing and the mm-hmm. way they're built mm-hmm. and then when you look at what's going on in Green Bay yep. I think we should have seen that coming really you're like on to something. really we should have you're you're you, yeah you're, because you're. What, what are they doing like what are the Jets doing they're physically on the line of scrimmage beating you up yep. like their D-line superior they have a good corner yep uh you know and so the way they're playing how really how was Green Bay what was Green Bay supposed to do against them to your point really 5.4 yards a carry yeah. Average. Running. 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 I mean, you getting five a pop? Yeah. You're going to win a game. So, to your point, they got that their identity. This is what I posed to you with Green Bay. Mm. I feel like, and you've watched it. I think Green Bay's coaching staff hasn't adjusted to the players. They're trying to be what they were with Devontae Adams. They're trying to run certain things and concepts. They don't have that dude. Mm. And New York Giants, what day ball, what has he done? He has just changed everything, everything. that 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 team is in their what identity a rock to what they have. And that's what I'm seeing. You know, their head coach, Matt LaFleur, got a lot of juice, but he was like, You got Aaron Rodgers. Mm. Now you're having a coach. Don't look good. Mm. Yeah. Don't look good at all. Yeah. I saw I saw I've seen two people now call out something. And I, I don't know what you think about it. Okay, tell me. They've called out Aaron Rodgers Mm -hmm. and Tom Brady. All right. What do they say? Andrew Whitworth (sighs) called out Brady. Whitworth? uh, Yeah. You got to listen to what he said. He called out Brady. Okay. What did he say? Because um, the the former offensive offensive tackle, tackle, 15, 20 years. 20 years. years. Great player. Just won a Super Bowl. He said that. Because you know Robert Kraft got married, mm-hmm. right, um, on Saturday. Yes. The owner of the Patriots. And Brady was there. Yes, he was. At the wedding. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. They have a game to play the, the next, next day, day. And they lost, right? And he said the Brady that he knew would have never even considered missing a Saturday practice. Because Saturday is, a, is important mental processing you know the quarterback position it's it's everything is mental mental right and so he said the Brady that he knew would have never even considered it Mm-mm. right i agree but he's like he thinks brady has checked out okay i mean that's visual evidence with that there's some evidence to that so i saw that i was like hmm because you never you never associate that with Brady, no, never associate that with him. But when he said that, I thought to myself, I was like, I would have never imagined Brady mi- like mi- missing up. What are you talking about? Like he's so locked in. Yeah. yeah. And then um, I forget which magazine it was I, I was reading, and they were talking about how Aaron Rodgers, 
because he was talking about retiring before and now it just seems like he's just going through the motions, yeah, right? Yeah. He's like, he's checked out also. And I was like, hmm. There, it, it, I don't want to say it's because they're playing bad. Now I'm going to say now they check, but it just, it's, there are things that are happening that never would have happened with these players before. So I don't know. And we'll end with this. I just want to know what you think about this because mm. you just sparked something. All right. We know players are playing longer, especially the quarterback position, the way they're being protected, the way they're working their bodies, mm. all that. Guys have never played this long. But we haven't talked about the mental side of it. Are they checking out checking before out. their body fails them? That hasn't, we haven't been able to really see that. It's why they talk about coaches and the old school philosophy is like a 10 year window, gotta go, you're just wiped out. Yep. Like, it's only gonna be for a chosen few that do that. But is that what we're seeing? Like, everybody's, you don't even have, you're not playing with your peers anymore, OC. Playing with their kids. Gronk was his boy. <laughs> Gronk was his guy, you know. He was his, he doesn't even have a guy. See, Bill, you're playing with your peers' children. I know. <laughs> That's who you're playing with. At what point is it just like coming to work, you're like, what? Because he would never miss that. So it's not the body. Ooh. Yeah. More reviews, OC. Okay. Let's More go. reviews. Yeah, let's go. Wow. I didn't even think about that. This is this is something to watch. Well, uh, thank you for posting your comments. We always appreciate that. Uh, we really do. Marty P. I like that. Oh, yeah, Marty P. Marty P. Yes. Yeah. So it's, it's, it sounds like you a singer in a rap group. Mm. Uh, the lead person in a rap group, good Marty name. P. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I started watching the NFL last year. Thank you for that. The sport is great, but these two, their conversations go above and beyond. Insightful, funny, lighthearted one minute, deep and meaningful the next. Yeah, that's good. That's that exactly was, what we wanted to do. That was, man, that was solid. Yeah. That was solid. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Marty you, Marty P. P. Marty yeah. P. Really appreciate Thank that. Thank you. Do Vanger. And I will say this. Simon helped me pronounce it because he mm. put the right, you know, mm. yeah, it's mm -hmm. good looking. Five stars. I don't know what I'm going to get, but I always enjoy it. <laughs> me neither. Me neither. And I always do. Mark, best episode. Was that the last episode? Oh, thank you, Mark. Oh, wow. You okay. guys rocked it. You called it on the Packers and they lost to the Jets. I forgot we did that. Yeah. That must have we been did, huh? Ostradamus because yeah. he does That's that. Interesting. Thank you very, very much. Yeah. We appreciate these comments and reviews. Uh, they mean a lot. And uh, we back at you. Uprise all day. We don't play. I'm going to get some Uprise information and I ain't telling nobody. <laughs> Holler at you next week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.